What's going on internet? IG here again today. We're having a look at another Linux distro review. Today I'm checking out the long-term support release of Pingai OS 14.04 and this is the fully loaded edition. So it's going to have all of the apps and tweaks pre-installed and you don't really have to do much work at all to get this system up and running. So first of all, let's just start out really quickly with the user interface. I want to say right off the bat that I think out of all, out of a lot of distributions, I really like the out of the box look and feel of Ping iOS. It puts quite a bit of work into the way the distro looks. So the theming of uh, GNOME Shell, for example, and some of the fonts, some of the icons, and the way the desktop is laid out is very, very nice. And especially when you go into the actual GNOME Shell overview, you can see here all the icons look big, bright and colourful and combined with that variety wallpaper plugin which runs up here in the tray, it pulls down random wallpapers from the internet and, uh, and just cycles through them on a 10 minute basis I believe. So this is a very nice looking desktop out of the box and you've got quite a few options to choose from. Obviously the desktop itself is customizable, you can shift stuff around, but the way that the desktop's laid out as far as having a places dock on the side there that auto hides and you've got some commonly used apps down here in the dock below which also works as a window manager. And also you've got a pretty easy to understand linear menu here running down on the side from the top left. It's all pretty logical and pretty well laid out. You've also got this nice little conky display on the right side of the screen here and you've even got a graphical user interface to kind of manage the conky stuff that, that is usually done just with uh, editing text files. But as you can see here we've got a few different options to choose from including, including different themes which you can simply enable by the click of a button. And you can see that a lot of these conky themes look really nice. And it's just another one of those things that adds a bit of flavor to this distribution, a little bit of uniqueness, uh, although the, the default conky theme I think is fine. Now the other thing that I like about this distribution is the fact that it's using an up-to-date version of GNOME Shell. Obviously it's very heavily tweaked out, but it is using GNOME 3.12 as opposed to GNOME 3.10 which ships with Ubuntu 14.04 by default. So we are using a more up-to-date version of GNOME which means you're going to get a bit smoother user experience and a little bit more continuity between all of the different apps. Now one other thing that I need to mention is the fact that they use Nemo as the default file manager. Now Nemo is the file manager from the Linux Mint community, so it's not so we're not using Nautilus here, but we are using a Linux Mint's own file manager, which rumoredly has a few more different options than what the Nautilus file manager does nowadays as default in GNOME. You know. Ultimately what I like about Ping iOS is the attention to detail. It's not so much the distribution as a whole, it is a very big distribution, 2.3 gigs for the standard install, and also it is pretty heavy on the resources. As you can see here I'm using about a gig of RAM and I'm using, I'm chewing through quite a bit of CPU as well. Now my machine is very well spec'd out so it's not really going to be a problem. But if you are running light on the resources then you will need to make sure that you have plenty of RAM and CPU to spare because as this distribution does have quite a bit running in the background, you want to make sure that you have plenty of juice. Gnome Do is also here, which is the fantastic little keyboard launcher that started my world of keyboard productivity way back in the day. It's good to see that Gnome Do is still kicking around, as it's probably one of the quickest ways to launch and run applications via a keyboard command. Now if you do want to launch programs the old-fashioned way, you do have, like I said, a menu up here that's categorized linearly like most logical menus are. And then you also have the GNOME Shell overview mode by tapping the Windows key on your keyboard and then you can click on the Apps button here and you get all of the apps displayed. So as we're now looking at all the apps, let's quickly run through some of these. So as far as an app selection goes, it's probably one of the most complete that you can get. And I really like the fact that these apps have been handpicked as ones that are pretty much the best for the job. So you've got Arista Tran Transcoder, which handles all of your media transcoding to different devices and different playback streams. You've got Clementine to manage all your music, which is probably one of the best cross-platform music managers. You've also got Wine pre-installed so you can run some of those Windows programs that you just can't shake. You'll be able to run them through a compatibility layer. You've got a torrent program which is Deluge. You've got DVD for DVD authoring. And you can see here the overview mode gives you kind of a mission control view of all of the different windows and apps that you have open. As well as you can shift them around to different desktop spaces if you so desire. 
You also have some popular internet services here enabled by default such as Dropbox and also Spotify for your online music streaming needs and you've also got Skype there as well. So you're pretty much set to go as far as popular online services go. As far as gaming is concerned, Steam is here by default as well to handle all of that stuff. You've got VLC Media Player for most of your media playback. You also have all of the codecs and all of the uh, fonts and flash already pre-installed. So there's really, like I said, not too much to worry about when you first install this system. This is pretty much out of the box. I haven't done anything to it. Um, and it's, it's pretty much ready to roll. And then there's all the standard stuff that you expect to come in a standard Linux distribution nowadays, such as image viewers, office suites, graphics editing, There's, we've also got the OpenShop video editor, rapid photo downloader, a lot of tools that I personally recommend here. So they're good to see. Now when it comes to managing this distribution, you have a couple of options here. You've got the Linux Mint Update Manager, which handles all of the updates that you might need for your system. And most of the time you'll see it running up here in the system tray with this little shield. It'll let you know when updates are available and if you've, and if you've ever used Linux Mint before you'll know exactly how it works. Now when it comes to actually installing software you have the Ubuntu Software Center. And the Ubuntu Software Center is probably, probably one of the easiest ways to install software but unfortunately it is kind of sluggish. You also have the Synaptic Package Manager to get a bit more of a detailed view of what packages you want to manage on your system. And you also have the software and update sources to help you manage things like PPAs and also to help you manage any of your additional drivers as well. One of the other ways that you can manage PPAs is with the YPPA Manager. And this gives you a bit more of a simple tool to help you in add, remove, and update your repository lists. The repositories are essentially ways that you can add more software to your system. Now, like I said, it's the little things that make this distribution unique and that some of those little things are also found through the some of the tweaks that you find in the file manager, such as scripts, such as opening up a root gedit folder or opening up your torrent video player or a video organizing script, all of which have been handcrafted to kind of suit a specific need in the distribution. For instance, video organizer, if you point it at a folder of uh, random video files or TV files that you've got from various sources, then you can point it at that, hit the video organizer button, and it will sort them out according to their metadata and bring in titles, artwork, etc., to kind of sort them out and make it a lot more logical and easier to find. All really nice handy little tweaks there. And I also dare say that they've pimped out Firefox web browser to its max capacity. So we've got a lot of add-ons running here a lot of extensions available, all of which to help your web browsing experience, whether it be trying to watch Netflix, Google Talk, or watching iTunes trailers, blocking ads, skipping load screens. There is a lot of different choices here. And the same can be said for Thunderbird as well. I guess at the end of the day, what I like about Ping iOS is it takes the time to do a lot of tweaks that you might not be bothered to do on your own. But if you are happy with the choices that Ping has made, then you may as well roll with it because it's a simple one-click install for a lot of these tweaks and software choices that are pretty good in my opinion. Now for those of you who like the idea of all the tweaks and all the hard yards that Pingai has put in but you don't necessarily like the app choices, then you can download the mini version. Now albeit the mini version still weighs in at about a gig, but you get the Pingai OS core uh, with all of its tweaks and all of its little enhancements, but you don't get any of the apps so that you can bolt in your own applications uh, as to your personal preference. Well, that about does it for me this week. I know this video is a little longer than normal, but this distribution is pretty big. My only criticism about it is that it is a bit heavy and also it has a few stability issues here and there. The GNOME shell, GNOME shell has crashed on me a few times and there are a few known issues that Pingai has put in the release notes for this operating system. But on the whole, I'm pretty impressed. Pingai was one of the first distributions that I used shortly after being introduced to Linux Mint and I still enjoy using it, and I still enjoy using it this many years on. So if you like a preloaded distribution that comes with a bunch of excellent apps and tweaks, then check out Ping iOS because it's probably one of the easiest ways to introduce someone to Linux. It looks great, it works well, and it covers pretty much every computing need out there. If you like the video, then definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, or you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. I will see you all again in the very near future. Thank you for watching. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.